see you found me. Don't talk to me, you low-down rat. Maynard. I just figured it out, and you've been hiding from me, and you ought to be, like, ashamed. I mean, I got feelings. I'm a human person. Maynard, I wasn't really trying to avoid you. I honestly, trusted you, and you snuck away. Why would you commit such a hateful crime as such a sweet, lovable kid? Man, oh, man, with a dumbhead question, what's her name? Lila Watkins. And wait till you see her, Maynard. She's exquisite. A princess, a duchess, an empress, a queen. A royal highnesship like that hacking around with a common cat like you, Dobe? No offense. And no offense, Maynard, and she is. She's got a job babysitting for one of the students, and I'm gonna keep her company. Uh-oh. Watch it, Dobe. She's trying to pull something sneaky. Anybody who's old enough to be a student don't have to be sat with by no babysitter. Mm, except you. Except me. I went the last year. Mm. Hi. Ah, there you are, Lila, my great tawny animal. Gee, I'm sorry I'm late. Have you been waiting long? Nope, I just got <laughs> here. <laughs> Maynard. Uh, Lila, my angel, this is my friend Maynard G. Krebs, and he was just leaving. I was? You was. Okay. I wonder how you knew I was leaving. I mean, I didn't even know I was leaving. Ooh, what an age we live in. <laughs> I'm afraid it won't be much of a date for us tonight, Dobie. I mean, babysitting in a crowded little apartment, just the two of us. Well, what do we do? Uh, somehow, my dear, I'm uh, pretty sure I'll think of something. <laughs> Brunkowski. Brunkowski? Yeah, and that's got to be truck horse Brunkowski, the football player. I see him every day at practice. I'm the uh, assistant manager of the team, you know. Oh, goodness, how exciting. You must tell me all about it. Oh, I shall, I shall. The very moment the baby's quiet and we're alone. About time you kids got here. Me and the little woman, we got a class over to the night school. Truck horse Bronkowski's wrecked a lot of things. Tackles, guards, centers. Once an entire goalpost had gotten his way, including the concrete foundation. But he wasn't gonna wreck my unwreckable romance with Lila. Yep, it was a tough fight. And I've got the limp and the laundry bills to prove it. But at last, the battle was over. The entire junior varsity was asleep. And I settled down to enjoy the fruits of my hard-earned victory. Almost. Orville, he's coming down with the sniffles. I know it. Yeah, him. Orville. Orville. Oh, him, yeah. All of a sudden, I remember how he sneezed twice this morning, right in the middle of the War of 1812. The War of 1812? That's what we were studying in the night school class, when I remembered about the sneezing. Daddy's coming, Orville. Hold that line there, boy. I may vote to have football declared un-American. Fuck that sniffling teammate. Daddy will fix whatever hurts. Where does it hurt, Bumpkin? Oh, for Pete's sakes, Bronk, what got into you? You barreled out of that classroom like it was fourth down and goal to go. I couldn't help it, Ethel. I got to thinking about Orville. Oh, Bronk is a big warrior. Bronk is a big mystery. Look how pale my poor little rookie looks. Rock him back, Orville, baby. Bronk, Daddy's that here. that isn't Orville. It's Sherwin. <laughs> oh. Well, Sherwin don't look too good either. <laughs> that Sherwin is maybe coming down with something. Okay, okay. Now, we won't go back to class tonight, but you know it's going to get you into a lot of trouble. Well, what kind of trouble can a man get into by being kind to his kids? Well, plenty. If he keeps fussing about the kids, instead of paying more attention to his classwork and football, he is going to get tossed out on his ear. And it'll be goodbye college, hello coal mine. Yeah. I'd hate to go back to digging, but the way I look at it, I got a responsibility to my squad here. Well, I brought him into this world. With your help, of course, my dear. But I've got to see that they're taken care of right. I sure don't want to give up school. I want to graduate and be a coach. But if it's a toss-up between getting my degree and watching out for my kids, well, the kids win without even taking off their sweatshirts. Ah, what's he was talking? I'll never graduate anyhow. What kind of quitter's talk is that? Truck horse Bronkowski never gives up. Too late. I've been so busy, I missed playing in three games already this season. 
If I miss one more, Coach Murdoch is going to toss me off the team and I'll be out of school for sure. Toby, it'd be such a terrible loss if Brompton graduate and get to be a coach. Can't we do something to help? We can sure try. I'm going to talk to Coach Murdoch. He's a rough, tough customer, but he doesn't scare me. Get out of here, Gillis, before I stuff you and serve you up to the team as a tackling dummy. Coach, I'm just asking you to give poor Bronkowski a break, please. <laughs> Be reasonable, sir. No. Maybe we ought to explain to the coach what reasonable means. Your coachmanship, the word reason... Crabs. Your football ship. <laughs> You're second assistant to the assistant manager of the team, right? Like right, and proud and honored to serve your good iron ship. One more bright crack out of you, and I'll have your job. Understand? You ain't gonna be happy with it when you get it. It's an awful miserable job. Crabs. But if you're a little hard set on it, you can have it right now. Here's my water bucket. Sure. Fixing ship. Only good manners. And my contract with the school is keeping me from tearing you to pieces. Now get out. Out. <laughs> Sportsmanship. I out. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, what about Bronkowski, sir? He's a wonderful fella. Give him a chance to graduate and become a coach. He's a great guy, but rules are rules. He's already missed playing in three games. One more and I gotta throw him off the team. It's in the book. But he only missed those games because he was so busy taking care of his family. I'd do anything I could to help him. But I don't write the rules, I only carry him out. Couldn't you make an exception, sir? Kids need men like Bronkowski to be their coaches and lead them. I'm a family man myself. I know how Bronkowski feels. Of course, sir. A man with such love and devotion to his family should be honored, not punished. You're absolutely right, Gillis. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, my pleasure, sir. Uh, then Bronkowski can miss playing in a game once in a while if he happens to be busy with his family. Are you kidding? He plays in every cotton-picking game on my schedule, or he's out on his ear. But, Coach, you just agreed that a man's family comes first. And if we don't start winning some games pretty soon, my family's gonna starve. So you go tell Bronkowski he better play this Saturday, and he better play good. Now get out! Yes. Out! <laughs> Now what? You keep the bucket, you deserve it. <laughs> now, the way I see it, we've got to make sure that Bronk goes to all his classes and plays in all the remaining games, starting with this Saturday. I've got a smashing idea. We could all help around the apartment. That should lift a big load off his mind. Hey, we sure could, couldn't we, Maynard? Yeah, you sure could. And Maynard, Bye. <laughs> we also means you. i got to work for fast to get away. Uh, there's one other thing we can do. Uh, try to talk my father into giving the Bronkowskis a discount on their groceries. And mentioning my father in a discount in the same breath is a sign of a weak mind, and I withdraw the suggestion. Why, Dolby? I don't understand. Uh, well, I don't know exactly how to put it. Put it? I know exactly how to put it. Your father's a tight is how to put it. <laughs> Maynard, please. Dolby, your father couldn't be so cheap that he refused to help people like the Brinkowskis. You're a new girl in town, ain't you? Now, wait a minute. Let's be fair. Maybe when the facts are presented to him, Dad will fool us all and be real eager to help. Help? Oh, son, I'll be happy to help any deserving young friend of yours who's working his way through college and supporting his family. What can I do? Give him all his groceries at a discount. What is the matter with these kids nowadays? Don't they know how to hang on to a bus? You're all heart, Mr. G. <clears throat> Look, I had to work hard for everything I got in life. I didn't have any open-handed father named Generous T. Gillis like some kids I know, and I won't embarrass you by mentioning his name, Doby, who get paid a dollar and a half an hour just to stand around the store and look like he's working. Uh, Dad, I've got calluses on my hands from working so hard. The salary's 75 cents an hour, and you haven't paid me a penny of it since last Christmas. Details, details. It's principle I'm interested in. <laughs> Well, there goes another sensational idea gurgling down the drain. <laughs> Maynard, poor Bronkowski. How come you didn't tell your father was Bronkowski? No, oh, I was afraid he'd be embarrassed if everybody knew he was temporarily short of money. Why? I don't get embarrassed and everybody knows I'm permanently short of money. <laughs> yeah, I promised Mrs. Bronkowski I'd pick up some baby supplies for her. I guess we'll just have to pay for them at Dad's regular prices and there goes my salary till next Christmas. Dan, I want to talk to you. What about them groceries for that friend of yours? Yeah. <laughs> I ain't talking. No, we'll pay the regular prices. Cash? Cash. I'm talking. <laughs> and, son, I am happy that you decided not to argue with me because, you know, I'm known in this neighborhood as a hard head. No, Mr. G. What you're known around this neighborhood is... Hey, a... <laughs> Help me with this shopping. 
Now, let's see. We'll need uh, uh, 20 packaged diapers, uh, six cans of talcum powder, and uh, four bottles of baby oil. Uh, that'll do it, Dad. Uh, how much do we... Uh... Uh, $12.32, and don't bother checking the cash register. I can outsmart it every day of the week. Uh -huh. Son, I know it's none of my business, but how come you're buying all of this baby stuff? Baby oil, diapers, talcum... My... What do you mean it's none of my business? <laughs> Whose business is it if it isn't a father's? Uh, what, Dad? Uh, what's the name of this fellow you're supposed to be buying all this stuff for? Well, what's the difference, Dad? You wouldn't know him. Try me. Yeah, Try I'd me. I'd rather not. Uh-huh. I don't mind telling you, Mr. G. He's a stranger. <laughs> stranger? Irving W. Stranger. <laughs> all right, you smarties. Uh... Winnie! 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 Gee, Dad, I did forget something. I'll take a, a couple of dozen baby bottles. <laughs> You were yelling so loud, I thought the store was on fire. Oh, I wish that all it was, Winnie, because we got insurance for that. Listen. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'd better take a couple of bottle warmers. I rest my case. Herbert, will you stop this? You're jumping to ridiculous conclusions. There's probably some perfectly simple explanation for the whole thing. I've heard about these runaway marriages, but who would ever think Toby would do it to us? And the baby. Gee, I think I'd better take a... A couple of dozen cans of strained baby food, too, Dad. See, you're scared, too. No, I am not. Doby, I want to talk to you. Yes, Ma? Dear, I want you to tell your father the truth. The truth about what? About, you know, dear. Uh, Mom. About me being a grandfather and your mother being a poor old grandmother. Then I must be an uncle. No, you're not. You're a father. Weren't you listening at all when I explained them things to you? <laughs> you're ridiculous. Suspicious father has the ridiculously suspicious idea that you are secretly married and have a baby. What? All right, tell me it ain't true. It ain't true. It isn't true. Mom, Dad, what's the matter with you? Of course I'm not secretly married. Of course I'm not a father. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, well, what about all them diapers and baby food and cotton and stuff that you haven't paid for? Dad, I've been trying to tell you. They're for this friend of mine, Bronkowski. I didn't want to let his name Oh, Bronkowski. There is a phony name for a phony story if I ever heard one. The only Bronkowski I know is a football player. And I read in the paper where he's working his way through college while supporting a wife and a whole brood of kids. And oh, what a miserable wretch I am. Doby, can you ever forgive me for not trusting you? Oh, sure, oh, Dad. I am Forget such it. a loudmouth. I hate myself when I go off the deep end like this. <laughs> Who don't? <laughs> Dad, what about the discount for Bronkowski? What could be more important for kids than having coaches and teachers who will set a good example for them? Well, in high school, if I had a coach like him, I'd be even straighter, sturdier, in the pink little chap than I am now. But that sounds impossible, don't it? <laughs> it would be a fine, generous act, dear. It would be your contribution to our future citizens. Well, it's an investment in people, Dad. Please. Well, who's arguing? Of course, I'm always ready to help some fine, young, upstanding citizen like Bronkowski. What do you say to a discount of one and a half percent? Mr. G, you want to hear what I say to a discount of one and a half percent? Never mind. <laughs> okay, three percent. Herbert. Five percent, and that's my limit. 20% is your limit, so we'll settle for 25. Not just a minute. <laughs> Thank you, Herbert. Thank you. I feel all warm here inside, and you can't blame me. Everything's working out beautifully. With that discount he got at Dad's store, Bronkowski could afford to quit one of his outside jobs. That gave him more time for schoolwork and football. And when it comes to relieving him of his worries about the kids, well, that's another reason I feel all warm here inside. I'm keeping this bottle heated up for Randolph. <laughs> lullaby and good night. Dolby, your lullaby singing is improving all the time. Oh, uh, do you really think so? There's no question of it. Look. <laughs> You're supposed to be practicing. I am. But I got to worrying about Leon Zierich. How's Zierich? How's my poor little defensive tackle, huh? Uh, relax, Bronk. Dolby took Leon to the doctor, and he says his ear is fine. Great. What about the other ear? Perfect. He's got 20, 20 ears. That's my boy. I better get back. <laughs> I'd sure love to see him play someday. You've never seen him play? Well, only on the television. You know, with the kids and everything. I never get a chance to go to the stadium. Well, you're gonna get there tomorrow, and so are the kids. I'll have Dad pick you up in the truck. Really? You mean it? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, wait till Bronx hears about this. Yeah, maybe you'd better not 
tell him until the game's over. Yeah, if he knows the kids are up there, he'll keep running up in the stands to burp them. <laughs> I want you to get out there and give them everything you got. Wilson Tech is tough, but if we play with guts and determination, victory will belong to S. Peter Pryor Iguanas. Boola, 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 boola. Just doing my bit for morale, your physical education ship. Bronk, I was afraid for a while they were going to lose you, but thanks to the efforts of our assistant manager here and his assistant, you made it. That's a great boy you got there, Gillis. Yeah, blood will tell. <laughs> All right, man. Let's get out there and play ball. Coach, the dwarf time to go home and see how the kids are. Yeah, but be quick about it. Kickoffs in five minutes. <laughs> Something's wrong. Oh, say, this is great, sitting right on the bench. Who says it don't pay to send your boy to college, huh? <laughs> hey, don't, there's your mom up there with me, Miss Bronkowski's. Uh, Winnie! Hey, Winnie! Ha-ha, <laughs> <laughs> look at me! Ha-ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> Where's Bronx? I don't think he came out yet. Maybe he's scared of crowds. I'd better oh, go get him. We don't want anything to go wrong today. Oh, especially with good luck Gillis on the bench. Come on, let's see. Let's... I gotta get home. <laughs> Bronk? Bronk, you'd better hurry up. Bronk? Bronk, where are you? Oh, the coach is yelling, but Bronk, they're gonna kick off. He isn't here. What? Where is he? I don't know. He just disappeared. It's like the end of his career. Well, I'll go tell the coach and then like duck. Maynard, we'll find him. There's no time, Dad. They'll have to start without him, and that's the end of his college career. Oh, well, listen, son, I know that sometimes it seems like I'm mean and heartless and cruel and rotten and silly. <laughs> but I... <laughs> I'm going in for Bronkowski. No, uh, Look, a lot when a that, sweet kid listen, like Bronkowski you... knocks himself out to working and studying and worrying just to get some place, yours truly, Herbert T. Allhart Gillis has got to go along with him. Maynard, get me one of those extra uniforms. Look, I'll put his other jersey on. It's got his number on a 49. Uh, Dad, yeah, listen. Just, just till he gets here. Hey, look, Dad. You Don't can't argue store. with your father. Go out and stall the coats till I can get into this stuff, will you? Come on, Maynard. No, no, I gotta get out of these things first. Maynard, Maynard! Now, this afternoon, team, I want you to do something entirely new. Win! All right, this is it, man. Now go out there and get him. All right, let's go. Come on, go. Brankowski, come on out of here. Yeah, he's coming, coach. Uh, Brankowski? <laughs> There goes the kickoff. Yeah, Dad doesn't catch it. Come on, Bronkowski, run, run! Why is your father walking with the ball? For him, that's running. <laughs> Come on, Dad, Bronk. Well, you better hide your eyes. Yeah, good thinking. <laughs> Did they hit him? Ooh, they hit him. <laughs> Here, Dad, smell this. Did you get the number of that truck? <laughs> hey, I gotta get back out there. Dad, Dad, you'll never make it. But Bronkowski. He's right. We've got to keep Bronkowski in that game or they'll find out he's not here. I'm going into that game and take Bronkowski's place. Oh, come now. Maynard. Look, when a sweet kid like Bronkowski knocks himself out working and studying and worrying. I said that already. <laughs> get in the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wilson Tech Tigers are having a fumble. Sherwin. Straight down the field for a touchdown. Things look Where bad. is everybody? They've lost their star player. He Wait a minute. The TV on. 49 is coming back in the field. Yes. 
Yes, it's Bronkowski. Bronkowski? <laughs> I'm Bronkowski. Now is Bronkowski fading back to pass? No. Now he's running. He fumbles the ball. And recovers. The crowd's going wild. <laughs> Ethel, Sherwin, Randolph, what are you doing there? What am I doing here? <laughs> Quit for this. Well, oh, you're going to be all right, son. Oh, did anybody get the number of that truck? <laughs> How'd I do? Crazy, man. You lost 93 yards. <laughs> Any sign of Bronkowski? Not yet. Give me the uniform. Maynard, you? Look, when a sweet kid like Bronkowski knocks himself out, we're Maynard, we already it. said that. Yeah, and I said it first. Put on the suit and get out there already. <laughs> Condition? He must be made of iron. But look at him, he's losing weight on every plane. <laughs> It's my turn again. Uh, sorry, no one's allowed in the locker room during the game. But I am now. Let me out of him. Oh, I like it. Hey, what happened to you fellas? You're a mess. <laughs> Here comes Bronkowski now. Only 30 seconds left to play, and the score is 10 to 6 in favor of the Wilson Tech Tigers. This bad for the Iguanas. There's the whistle and the kickoff. Bronkowski has it on the four-yard line. He's got good interference. He's on the 40, the 30, the 20. They can't stop him. He's over. It's a touchdown. There's the gun. He won his win. Fans, I've never seen an exhibition like Bronkowski turn out today. He literally has the strength of three men. You can say that again. Yes! Hooray! Oh, oh. What's the matter, Dad? Does it hurt? No, only when I lay off. <laughs> feel natural without a number on the back. Nobody's gonna need a number to identify you at that graduation tonight, Bronk. You're beautiful. Ah, oh, cut it out. Well, there wouldn't be any graduation, Dobie, or that new coaching job that Bronk starts on next week if it hadn't been for you kids. Oh, you kids were wonderful, both of you. Ah, oh, cut it out. Bronk, they'll be graduating without you if you don't get a move on. It's almost 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah. I put the kids to sleep so good, you won't have nothing to do all evening but sit on the sofa. Oh, wonderful. That's just what we've been waiting for. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Honey, relax. I was young once myself. I think. <laughs> Listen, Bronk, I don't think I'm going to go to the graduation. I mean, I think I ought to stay home. What's the matter, sweetie? Something hurt you? Huh, huh? No, no, it, it's not like that. It's just that I... What are you trying to tell me? Does this answer your question? You just told me. <laughs> oh, boy, another fullback. Maybe a couple of defensive ends. Dare I hope for an entire backfield? 